Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. It's the holiday time, y'all, and that gets me to thinking about prime rib. Now, you don't always have to spend over $200 on a great big whole prime rib. Just the other day, I was strolling through Walmart. I found a five pound prime rib roast for around 65 bucks. So I wanted to take that prime rib roast, cook it just like I would one of the whole ones and see if it turns out holiday table worthy. Let's get to cooking. So this prime rib roast that I have today weighs five pounds. Now it's about a quarter of a whole giant prime rib, but you save some money by buying a smaller piece. Now it's not gonna feed as many people. You're looking at four to six servings, depending on how thick you like your slices. Now I chose this one over a bone-in version, which they had at Walmart, because I just wanted all the meat. This one's marbled, I can see it through the packaging, and I know it's gonna be good. First thing I'm gonna do is get it out of the cryovac and get some of this moisture dried off the prime rib. When I'm looking at this meat, I wanna see that marbling in the spinalis, the marbling in the eye of that ribeye. When I'm feeling on it, I can tell it's got a little hard fat down here on the tail end I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. Start in here. We're just gonna round it off here. I'm not gonna need that fat. It is excess weight. You could use it to render it down, maybe make some tallow, throw it in some grind for some sausage. I want it to have a nice prime rib shape to it. The rest of this fat is gonna render. It's gonna give us some flavor. Now I'm just gonna take some pieces of butcher twine and tie around this prime rib because I want it to hold its shape. You don't have to get it super tight, but you want it tight enough to where it doesn't spread out when it cooks. I just make a little butcher's knot on it here, cinch it up a little bit. What I like about that is it helps it hold its shape. That's gonna keep that prime rib roast from spreading out. It's gonna make us have pretty cuts when we get ready to slice it. I'm gonna put together a little rub combo to go on the outside. So I'm gonna start off with some of my TX seasoning. I'm just gonna eyeball some out in a bowl here. It's gonna take a couple tablespoons anyway. And then I've got some chimichurri seasoning. Now normally this is used to make a dehydrated chimichurri sauce, but I'm gonna use it as a herby crust on the outside of this prime rib. About equal parts TX and the chimichurri. And then to give it a little more flavor, I've got some dehydrated garlic and some dehydrated onion going in. I like the chunky pieces. Instead of just using garlic powder or onion powder to give it a little more texture, a little more flavor. So I've got a little olive oil. We're gonna get coated on the outside of this prime rib for a binder. People always get on to me, you know, you call it prime rib, you're not cooking prime beef. Well, that's two different things. You don't have to be prime to be prime rib. It's just about the presentation. You can cook a prime, prime rib, but today we're cooking Walmart Black Angus Choice. So I'm starting off the season here with a little bit of swine life prime beef. It's just gonna be my little base layer of flavors. It goes excellent on prime rib. Now that we got that beefy layer going, with the prime beef rub, it's time for some herbs. So I'm just gonna use my hand and kind of cake this on. You wanna sprinkle it over it. And what's gonna happen, that olive oil that we used as a binder is gonna reconstitute some of these herbs. It's gonna add some moisture to them. As the meat cooks, it's also gonna pull out moisture. So all this is gonna soften. It's gonna make a nice crust on it, but the herbs will be cooked and they're not gonna burn up. That's the important part. But if you'll notice on there, We've got the edges coated. We've got the outside, the top. Don't be scared to season your meat. So I've got my Grilla Silverback pellet grill fired up today. Got some hickory pellets in there. I'm just gonna set the roast right on the center grate over an aluminum foil line drip tray just to keep the mess down. And we're gonna leave it alone. But I want some smoke on the outside of this roast. I want it to come up nice and slow to render that fat to take it up to about 120 degrees internal so it'll carry over at about 125. Now we're just gonna get the lid closed and let this baby do its job. All right it's been 30 minutes our prime ribs been on the smoker here this is where i want to put a probe in it because i don't want to mess it up if i'm watching the internal temperature i know what it's doing i can leave the lid closed so i'm just going to stick it in here go down we're about midways in that roast now i just got to let it cook leave the lid closed watch the internal temperature i've got it set for 115 first it's going to let me know to start paying attention to it at 120, I'm taking it off and resting it. All right, our dot's going off. It was 120 degrees internal. That's as far as I want it to go on the pit. So I'm gonna take my probe out. Look at this roast. Uh-oh, that is a thing of beauty right there. We got that nice crust all on the outside. I gotta get over the cut board. It's hot, but check it out. You know that's gonna taste good. All right, y'all, I let this prime rib just hang out here with a little aluminum foil over it. If you wanted to rest it longer, hey, wrap it up, throw it in a dry cooler. It'll hang out for a couple hours and stay warm. That way you can cook your other stuff for your party. But I can't take it no more, I gotta try it. So I'm gonna try to get these strings off here and I'm gonna use some scissors. I know I tied three of them on here. I just gotta find them in all this delicious crust. 
There's one, there's two, and I got one more right here in the center. For the moment of truth, I'm fixing to cut me off some. So first, I'm gonna take this edge off. I'm gonna eat this crusty bit, but let's get a decent sized piece off right behind it. Oh man. I'm just gonna make a few slices here, let them fall out, and look at that, that is beautiful. Prime rib, perfectly cooked. Spinalis, got some fat to it. And just because it's red don't mean it's blood. That's meat juice, y'all. It's supposed to be that color. As it oxidizes, it turns even more red, but it's not blood, it's delicious meat juice. So I'm gonna dip some of that crunchy end in there. Holy smoke. Yes, sir. That's Walmart prime rib all day long. Mm. This flavor on the outside is amazing. I mean, normally that end piece, you know, that ain't the best, the optimal piece you want to try. But that crust, oh man. Now I tried the end piece. I'm gonna put that one to the side. I gotta get out a piece of this that's more rare. We don't have a lot of flavor on the inside. It's just the beef. We put the seasoning, the herbs, all the flavor on the outside with the smoke. So the important thing on a prime rib is to get it really good and seasoned on the outside so that flavor carries through. And I'm gonna try a moment of truth bite right out of the center, see if we have any flavor. I tell you what, I'm impressed by this small prime rib roast. I just proved that you don't have to buy the whole prime rib to turn out something fantastic. This little five pound roast quarter prime rib will melt in your mouth. And that's what it's all about. I know everybody that I serve it to is gonna love it. Mm. Hey, we well, appreciate y'all hanging out with us. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel. You know you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Shell and I do a weekly podcast where we talk about all the delicious stuff we cook. So y'all give that a listen too. Hey, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Nobody would know you got this at Walmart.